stage one and welcome to your fifth day of your poetry writing lessons and this is the final lesson for this week. Your learning objective for today is to generate ideas for my writing. Let's have a look at our success criteria here. By the end of the lesson I hope you can use words to describe an image should also be able to say, I can also use phrases to describe an image. And finally, I can even generate rhyming words. Before we get started with today's lesson, I'd like you to do some retrieval practice, thinking about all the things that you have learned this week. I would like you to complete the retrieval quiz. So it's this one here. Quick Fire 5 Key Stage 1 Poetry Does It Rhyme? You can find that on the website. Good luck! We'll start today's lesson by looking at a waggle. Can you remember what waggle means? That's right, it's what a good one looks like. Here I've got our waggle for a seaside poem, which we will be studying next week in more depth. This waggle has been identified as a good one because it has got these features of a poem that we looked at earlier in the week. I'm going to read you the poem. I'd like you to listen really carefully and see if you can hear any of these examples or see any of these features whilst I am reading it. So make sure you've got your best listening ears on, ready to hear our poem. Sea animals. What do you see in the sea? Animals moving free. Snails and whales using their tails. Seals and eels searching for meals. Catfish, flatfish chasing a fat fish. Bass and wrasse swimming in mass. Hagfish, hogfish, trailing dogfish. What do you see in the sea? Animals moving free. Well done for listening so well. And if you'd like to pause the video and have a discussion with your grown-up, perhaps about what you liked about the poem, what you didn't like, and then discuss whether you could identify any of these features. Moving on from our waggle, which we will look at in more detail next week, we're going to have a think about the beach and the seaside. Have a look at these five images on your screen, because we are going to be using these images to help you write your own poem next week, similar to the waggle that we just looked at. For today, I would like you to have a discussion with your grown up about these images. So I'd like you to look really carefully and closely at them and then tell your adult what do you see at the beach. Once you have had that discussion with your grown-up about what can you see at the beach using those images, that brings us to our first activity for today's lesson. So using the images that you just looked at and you discussed, I would like you to create a word bank using those pictures. So as you can see here, I've got my word bank cloud and you can find this on the website. And at the top, we've got the title, what can you see at the beach? In this word bank, I would like you to write down as many things that you could see in those images of the beach. So you make sure you discuss it first with your grown up if you haven't already done so. And then I'd like you to write down your ideas in the word bank bubble. So for example, if I have a look at this image here, I can see these stripy deck chairs. So I'll get my pen and I will just write deck chairs. So that's one of the things I can see. Making sure I'm joining up my handwriting. Oops. 
remember to dot that I as well. So that's one of the things that I can see at the beach from those images. I'm going to take another look. I can also see sand. So I'm going to write that as one of my words. Sand. So now I'm starting to build up my word bank of things I can see at the beach. I challenge you to find as many different things in those images as you can and write it down on your word bank. If there's something that you usually see at the beach, if you've been, and it's not in those images, perhaps you could write those down as well. Once you have completed your word bank, which is activity one, I'd like you to move on to activity two for today's lesson. So again, we've got our different chilli challenge levels. So you can either choose mild challenge, medium challenge, or our hot challenge. And what I would like you to do is using your word bank of the things that you can see at the beach from those images and that you've just filled in, I'd like you to choose five of the words that you have written down on your word bank. Then I would like you to, if you're going to do the mild challenge, write one word that rhymes with each chosen word. If you're going to choose the medium challenge, I'd like you to write three words that rhyme with each chosen word. And for the hot challenge, I would like you to try five words that rhyme with each chosen word. So here are your challenge sheets below, which are on the website. So we've got mild, medium and hot. I'm going to go through an example of what you could do. And then you can get on with your activity. So, for example, on our mild challenge, it says to write one word that rhymes with each chosen word. So thinking about your word bank cloud, you might have written the word ball because I could see people playing things like volleyball on the beach. So I might have written ball in here. So I'm going to take my pen and that will be my first chosen word. So this says chosen word from word bank. That's where I write ball, making sure I join up my writing and I keep it on the line as much as possible. So there's my chosen word. Now I need to think of a rhyming word to go with ball. So let's have a think. We need it to rhyme with that all sound. I know I could write the word tall. Ball, tall, they sound the same. So there's my first rhyming word and I cross my T as the last thing. So that's one example. So that will be if you're doing the mild challenge, yours will look like that. It will be the same if you're doing medium, but instead of finding one rhyming word, you need to find three rhyming words. And if you're doing hot, you need to find five rhyming words to go with your chosen word. Good luck with your writing. That brings us to our plenary for today's lesson, and we are going to have a go at doing true or false. So I think you've done this before. So if you think the answer to my question or statement is true, I'd like you to give me a big thumbs up. If you think it's false, if it's wrong, I'd like you to give a thumbs down. So get your thumb ready to either point up or down. My first statement, a poem always has to rhyme. I'll read it once more. A poem always has to rhyme. True or false? That's it, it is false. Well done if you got that right. A poem does not always have to rhyme. Next statement. Got that thumb ready? A stanza is a group of lines. 
A stanza is a group of lines. True or false? Well done, that one was true. Thinking back to our features of poems that we did the other day, a stanza is a group of lines, like a chunk of writing. Next statement, a line has to have a full stop. A line has to have a full stop. True or false? Well done, that one was false. A line does not have to have a full stop. Well done if you got that one correct. The final one. The title of our waggle is Sea Animals. The title of our waggle is Sea Animals. True or false? Well done. That one was true. The title of our waggle is Sea Animals. And like I said earlier, we'll be looking at that in a lot more depth next week. Right, so that brings us to the end of our lesson. And we've just got time to do a little reflection on what you have been learning today. So the lesson objective to generate ideas for my writing. I'm looking at our success criteria. You can tick the air if you think you got the success criteria right, if you feel confident that you can do these things. You can dot it if you're not sure, or you can give yourself a tick and a dot in the air if you're not quite there yet. So the first one says, I can use words to describe an image. So if you were able to fill in your word bank to describe those beach pictures, give yourself a big tick. Next, I can also use phrases to describe an image. So if you put more than one word, if you put a phrase like golden beach, give yourself a tick. And finally, I can even generate rhyming words. So in activity two, if you were able to quite easily come up with some rhyming words for your chosen words from your word bank, give yourself a big tick. OK, well done for working super, super hard and I hope you have a lovely weekend.